This is part three of Wall Street's hostile takeover of America's real estate market. I'm Jen Nodine. I'm a licensed mortgage loan officer in North Carolina. I've been in the business for almost 30 years and I'm disgusted by what Wall Street has done and is doing to our real estate market. There is a huge untold story here that I am trying to tell. So let's get into it. In our timeline, we left off in 1981 during the savings and loan crisis. Now the savings and loan crisis was actually another mortgage crisis because the savings and loans at the time pretty much were the entire mortgage market. It's the only place where Americans could obtain a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. It's made them vulnerable to rising interest rates because they had to remain competitive to attract depositors but at the same time they were collecting interest on those lower fixed rate mortgages and so they were paying out more interest than they were receiving back but this wasn't a problem under normal circumstances interest rates normally rise and fall in small increments and they, but they remain overall steady so it all kind of worked out in the wash i guess you could say but in 1979 Within 12 months of Solomon Brothers opening their mortgage securities trading department, we had a change in the Federal Reserve Chairman. The conservative guy who had been doing the job for a long time suddenly gets a promotion to the Treasury. And he gets replaced by a man named Paul Volcker, who comes in guns blazing. He's the new sheriff in town, and he's going to do things differently. And conservative is not his middle name. He immediately begins an unprecedented application of policy using uh, inflation as his pretext. He, in 1979, as soon as he takes the job, he starts aggressively hiking interest rates. And this immediately imperils the savings and loans. Now remember, this is less than 12 months after Solomon Brothers just opened their mortgage securities trading desk. Um, this immediately imperils the savings and loans who are completely in control of the mortgage market. And as he's making these bold moves, bold, unprecedented, untested, unconventional moves, the inflation rate gets worse. It doesn't turn around, it gets worse. But he doesn't question his choices, he just digs in his heels. And in June of 1981, he pushes the federal funds rate to 21%. And this is the final blow to the savings and loans. By September 30th, when Congress throws them this lifeline tax break if they sell their loans, um, they're desperate. They are on their knees. And this is how they are served up to Solomon Brothers by Congress. And just like the creation of this mortgage securities trading department, nothing about this deal passes the sniff test. Because we know Solomon Brothers has been expanding this department that hasn't been making any money for three years. Um, and suddenly overnight it rains billions in profits down on this department. Ranieri's department goes from lackluster to suddenly making more than half of the entire firm's revenue that year. We know Louis Ranieri has been traveling back and forth to Washington to rub elbows with politicians. Wonder what they were talking about. We know he's probably been spending a lot of money on political contributions. We know he's been hiring lawyers and lobbyists and taking on the laid off employees of their competitors when they close down their mortgage securities desks because they're not making money. So why does Solomon Brothers keep opening their checkbook for Louis Ranieri just so he can have fun on an ego trip? I don't think so. Um, it sure looks to me like they knew what was coming. So they had to know, number one, that the savings and loans were going to be put into crisis, which means that the savings and loans were intentionally put into crisis. And it means that they knew Congress would serve them up on a platter in a state of desperation. All of Ranieri's efforts are now paying off. In desperation, presidents of savings and loans across the country agree 
to sell their mortgages to Solomon Brothers and to buy back the mortgages of another savings and loan from them. Solomon Brothers gets to name their price on the buy side and the sell side. And they turn billions in profits from this crisis in our housing market. So Solomon Brothers first attempt at targeting our real estate market has resulted in billions of profits. Do you think they're gonna keep coming for it? In my next video, I'll talk about the era of the subprime market. See you next time.